Using the node editor lets you make more complex changes to an object. If you remember from the one video, we had had two, we had had a, um, a box that we had a blue color to, and then we had subdivided the box, and we made a new material red, and then we painted on like selected faces and assigned the new color to the face. Now that could be used to make numbers on a box or something like that. But using uh, image textures, you can keep your uh, resolution really low, your uh, vertice density really, lo really low, and use pictures to make up for that changes in material on an object. So all I have here is the default um, blender scene. I've changed my spotlight into a uh, sun lamp and put it a little bit to the front left of the cube and, uh, and angled it back towards it. No material on the cube or anything. So let's go ahead and select the cube. Let's hover over our three lines here. Left click and drag over so we get a new window. Now this time we want to open up our UV image editor. So we've opened this up and you end up with this, this grid pattern here. All right, so let's go ahead and tab, hovering over our window on the right, let's go ahead and tab into edit mode and let's hit U. Now we have some choices here. This will bring up our UV mapping menu. We have a regular unwrap. This will be used for more when we add seams. We'll do that later. Add some seams, more complex objects. For something like this, you could use a smart UV project. You could also use a uh, cube projection. And um, there's project from view, which can be used in certain circumstances. So let's go ahead and this, since this is a pretty basic object, let's go ahead and do a smart UV project. I find that to be the easiest. All right, all these settings should be good. And let's go ahead and hit OK. All right, so what you'll see over here now in your UV window, what it, done, what it has done is it's taken a 3D object, our cube, and made it into a 2D object. So a cube has six faces. And over here you see six squares. So each face over here has been smashed has been cut into two-dimensional space that's where they get the name uv because these are x y z coordinates in three-dimensional space since it's a 2d instead of using x and y again they've just made it uv so u would be like your x and v would be your um, v would be your y axis over here on 2d space all right some things we can do here with this is we can actually add a a new image if you'd like. So you go down here and if you hit new, you'll come up with some uh, settings here for a new image. You can name it whatever you want. So if we want to name this box, okay, our, our resolution, which is 1024 by 1024, you want to work in these numbers. So 1024 by 1024, 2048 by 2048, or this number times three, you always want to work in those dimensions. It seems to work better. We have alpha uh, generated type blank. You can change this and you can make it a UV grid. You can make it a uh, color grid. And what these UV grid will give you little boxes here when it's made, or a color grid will give you like color boxes, one, two, three, four. And what this is mainly used is for like checking for stretching. So let's go ahead and make it a UV grid and hit OK. So what this will do is this is checking for stretching. So you can, you can apply this to this cube and you'll see if all these squares come out looking even or if they come out looking stretched, like some are bigger than others, and then you would have to make some adjustments. Cubes are pretty basic, so they, they don't usually do, they won't do that. All right, so now we have this image called box. All right, let's go ahead over and let's change this back to our node editor. And let's go into Let's go over into our materials and let's say use nodes. All right, so what we can do is, is now we have our diffuse shader here, but say we want that image to appear on our cube. All I have to do is shift A and we have texture and we do an image texture. If we click hover over the box here that says that has this little picture in it, any file we've loaded already will be in here. So let's go box. We want it to be a color data. 
And let's take this and let's put it right, remember yellow to yellow, so color into the color here. Now if we change this to a texture material, now notice we have these squares on here. And we can look around and we see that all the squares are evenly, so we know that this texture is not stretched in our UV mapping. Another good habit to get into when you do this is sometimes it doesn't matter, but you want to know, you want to tell this cube that it's using UV coordinates. So another thing we can do is Shift A, Add. If we go up to Input and Texture Coordinate, we get this menu. You'll notice this one says UV. So if we left click over this blue, remember blue, and then it's going into a blue here. And all that does is saying use the UV coordinates to map this image onto this box. And our UV coordinates be that we made a little bit ago. All right, so let's go ahead back to our UV image editor. And let's go ahead and put, uh, let's go back to object mode. And let's go into rendered mode. And there we go. There's our, our box. Our, our sun's pretty bright. As it's Actually, I'm not sure why it is doing... Actually, it is because the lamp is very bright from that angle. So let's go to 1. And so, yeah, our X ones are. So let's go into our... Let's hit Z a couple times. Go to wireframe. Let's select our lamp. And let's take this down to 20. And let's go back into render it again. Okay, so now it's not so overpowering that it's just canceling everything out. But you can see that the the squares are on here and they're all nice and evenly, pretty evenly distributed and, and there's stretching going on. All right, so let's go back and hit Z a couple times. Go back into, let's select our box. Let's back into edit mode. All right, so what, what you can do is also, if you, if you select, if you hit A, you can select everything here. Now, if you go to UVs and you go to Export UV Layout, what you can do is you can take this file, name it, and put it put it somewhere, and it'll come as a PNG image. So you can save this in a file, and then if you want to open it in something like Photoshop or GIMP or um, there's some other programs out there that, that recognize PNG files, you'll actually have a blank page, and then you'll have this wireframe on top of this UV grid on top of the UV layout on top of it and then you can paint pictures you can even print this out and then paint on top of it and then scan it back in or anything like that and get a file that matches up where these squares are so let me go ahead and open up a file um, okay I made a file called box num UV all right so now I have this file here and I've, all I did was take this over, I put the numbers in, took off the UV, the uh, grid on top, and then put this back in, and then it matches up with what was here. So now if I go into my node editor, and I change this, I scroll in, and I change this, hover, click this, now I have a box num UV PNG. All right, so now let's go into rendered mode. And there we go. I've put the numbers on the box. You'll notice some of the, the numbers are sideways, but you know we're just showing that it goes on the box. So you'd have to be careful and maybe turn some squares around, or if this is good. So you have kind of like a number dice here, number die. All right. So that's how you would do. That's how you put images on a a square like that.